Hi everyone, here we are, another Saturday in lockdown. Hope you're not getting stir crazy too much and that you're keeping safe and well. So con to continue with part three. Initially, when the spreadsheet had worked its magic for the first time, it had calculated that I would be better off by 91 pounds per month if I lived in Malta. But that was only the current month and it could and probably would all change next month but I was encouraged by the first projection by the spreadsheet program. I started having problems with my email which is not what you want when you're trying to negotiate with people in another country so I spent a whole day trying to fix the problem but gave up and resigned myself to the fact that I was better off changing my email address completely. The downside to all this of course is trying to remember who the important people are that you need to contact to tell them of the change. By important I'm talking about online banking, utility companies etc. So that was another irritation for me to sort out. I received a phone call from another estate agent in Malta who advised that for 850 euros per month which is about 720 pounds per month I could get a very nice two bedroom furnished apartment in Malia, which is towards the north of the island, an area of Malta I particularly liked, and is a popular destination for expats, so all seemed good. Things seemed to be going all too well, which in a way concerned me. I had appointments to view properties when I was going over to Malta in March, but I was now thinking about income tax. Could I still have my UK pension tax in the UK or should I transfer it to Malta and pay their income tax? Should I try to open a Maltese bank account? I read on the internet that it was difficult. The UK has a double tax agreement with Malta but all the details of it confused me <clears throat> so I'll have to try and speak to a tax advisor in Malta who hopefully would speak good English and see the best way to go. Anyway, I spoke to the International Pension Service in the UK as the internet had recommended and of course hung on and listened to the usual we are extremely busy recorded message and advising me to visit their website which I'd already done and found that I needed to make contact by phone. I gave up after 16 minutes and tried again. Eventually spoke to someone who apologised for my wait I didn't get much information from them other than I could have my UK state pension paid to me either from the UK or Malta. Great advice, which I'd already found out from the internet. I asked about applying for an S1, which is a form which would allow me free medical treatment in Malta. But again, nothing straightforward. I was told I would need to provide a Maltese address and phone number and then I would have to contact the International Pension Service when I was in Malta, clearly at my own expense, to give them a date of entitlement, whatever that means, and then I would be issued with the magical S1 which would uh, allow me free medical treatment. My other option would be to take out private health insurance. No mention was made to me about the UK leaving the EU and how it might affect me. Next, HMRC. What a surprise. They were extremely busy as well. Par for the course, I think. I don't want to be political, but both these organisations are government run. No wonder people get frustrated with trying to contact them and complain about how long they must wait for someone to speak to them. 36 minutes later, I spoke to someone and all he managed to do was give me a link for a form I needed to download after the 6th of April 2020, which is a new tax year, and send it off somewhere. I discovered sometime later in the day that the link I was given didn't even work. Again, no mention from HMRC about leaving the EU and how it might affect me. I knew that these people like us didn't know what would happen after December 2020, but it would be nice if they had said that to you. Latest email from one of the estate agents are asking the following questions. When are you wanting to take occupancy and for a minimum of one year? How many people will be residing in the apartment? Are there any children? 
Do you have any pets? Do you need a garage? If yes, then you would need to increase your budget. Owners tend to ask the nationalities and occupations of their prospective tenants, so I would appreciate if you could share this info with me. I thought they were fair questions, which I had no problem in answering. So, next Saturday, the story continues. Thanks for watching, and I hope you're finding all this interesting. Don't forget, if you're not already doing so, subscribe to the channel and keep up to date with my videos. Also, please email with me with any questions you may have, and I will answer each and every one of you. The email address is livinglifeinmalta at gmail.com. In the meantime, until next Saturday, stay well and safe. Bye for now.